What led to the tragic plane crash that killed six Kenyan MPs in 2006? Our story begins with a peace mission. In the early hours of April 10, 2006, a mission of hope was set in motion. The goal? To initiate efforts to reconcile warring communities in the Masabit County of Kenya. These factions, the Borana, Gabra and Rendil, had been at odds for years, their conflicts reaching a fever pitch in 2005 when violence erupted. This was a mission of great significance, a beacon of hope for a region torn apart by tribal conflicts. It was the first time that the leaders of these three groups had agreed to sit together and devise a comprehensive peace program. The significance was not lost on the Kenyan government, who decided to send a delegation of high-ranking officials to mediate these discussions. Members of the peace delegation, including six members of parliament, boarded a Chinese-built Kenyan Air Force Harbin Y-12, a twin-engine turboprop. This plane was tasked with carrying these officials from Nairobi to Masabit to participate in this crucial peace conference. Among the leaders on board were prominent figures such as the then Deputy Leader of Opposition and North Hor MP Bonaya Godana, Saku MP Abdi Sasura, Moyele MP Guracha Galgalo, and Laisamis MP Titus Ngoyoni, who also served as the Assistant Minister of Regional Development. Also present was MP Mirugi Karyuki, the Assistant Minister for Internal Security, and a man whose opinion was highly valued by then President Mwai Kibaki. This peace mission was not just a political assignment. It was a journey towards peace, a voyage towards a future where tribal conflicts were a thing of the past. These officials were not just mediators, they were peacemakers, bridging the divide between warring communities. As the officials boarded the Harbin Y-12, little did they know of the fate that awaited them. Aboard the Chinese-built Kenyan Air Force Harbin Y-12, the peace delegation took off, bound for Masabit. Seventeen souls were on board, a mix of government officials, MPs and crew members, all with one mission in mind, to bring peace to the warring communities in Masabit County. Among them were prominent figures such as the then Deputy Leader of Opposition and North Hor MP Bonaya Godana, Saku MP Abdi Sasura and MP Mirugi Karyuki, the Assistant Minister for Internal Security. The flight that day was not a routine one. The skies were heavy with rain, the air filled with a sense of urgency and hope. As the twin-engine turboprop sliced through the thick clouds, the passengers discussed their peace mission, the first time leaders of the Borana, Gabra and Rendil had agreed to sit together after years of hostilities. However, the weather conditions were far from ideal, the visibility was poor and the rain lashed against the aircraft. At around 10 in the morning, a tragedy unfolded. Near Masabit National Park, about 430 kilometers northeast of Nairobi, the plane burst into flames. Eyewitnesses recounted the horrific scene. The plane, once a symbol of hope and peace, was now a burning wreck. Amid the smoke and flames, the fate of the 17 passengers was sealed. Only three survived the crash. Provincial Commissioner for Eastern Province Patrick Osare and Kenya Air Force crew members Senior Sergeant Isaac Kingori Moreithi and Senior Private Trevor Lukwe Mwamuye. The six MPs, including those who were also assistant ministers in the government, did not survive the crash. Along with them, an undersecretary in the President's office, lower level officials, police, and Air Force crew members perished in the accident. In an instant, the peace mission turned into a tragic disaster. As the news of the crash spread, rescue efforts began amidst challenging conditions. The terrain was treacherous and the weather uncooperative with heavy rain, making the road slippery and reducing visibility. Despite these hurdles, the brave rescuers pressed on, determined to reach the wreckage and find any possible survivors. Among the 17 passengers on board the ill-fated aircraft, only three were fortunate enough to survive the calamity. These were the Provincial Commissioner for Eastern Province, Patrick Osare, and Kenya Air Force crew members, Senior Sergeant Isaac King Ori Muraithi and Senior Private Trevor Lukwe Mwamuye. Their survival amid such a devastating catastrophe was nothing short of a miracle. But the news was not all hopeful. The death toll was staggering, with 14 lives lost in the tragic incident. Among the deceased were six members of Parliament, 
including the then Deputy Leader of Opposition and North Ho MP Bonaya Godana, Saku MP Abdi Sasura, Moyale MP Guracha Galgalo, Laisamis MP, and also Assistant Minister of Regional Development, Titus Ngoyoni, Abdullahi Adan, Member of the East African Parliament, and MP Mirugi Karyuki, the Assistant Minister for Internal Security. These were not just officials, but peacemakers who were on a mission to reconcile warring communities in Marsabit County. Their loss was a severe blow to the peace process they had been championing, and their absence was deeply felt. Other casualties included the Provincial Commissioner, the Moyal District Commissioner Peter Kingola, and the Anglican Bishop for Kirinyaga Diocese, William Wako. There was also an undersecretary in the President's office, lower-level officials, police and Air Force crew members who perished in the crash. The tragedy shook the nation to its core. The late President Mwai Kibaki, in an address to Kenyans, sent his condolences to the families of the deceased, whom he referred to as peacemakers. The nation joined him in mourning the loss of these brave souls who had dedicated their lives to the service of their country and the pursuit of peace. It was a devastating loss for Kenya and the nation mourned. In the wake of the tragedy, questions arose. What caused the crash? Could it have been prevented? The investigation into the disaster was initiated immediately, with initial findings suggesting that weather conditions may have played a pivotal role. Government spokesperson Alfred Mutua stated that preliminary reports indicated the airplane may have crashed due to poor visibility caused by adverse weather over Masabit Hill. But the weather was not the sole focus of the investigation. The aircraft itself, a Chinese-built Kenyan Air Force Harbin Y-12 twin-engine turboprop, was under scrutiny. This aircraft, built by the Harbin Aircraft Industry Group, was a development of the Harbin Y-11 airframe with several improvements, including a redesigned wing, larger fuselage and replacement of radial piston engines with turboprops. But despite these improvements, the question remained, had there been any mechanical issues that contributed to the crash? The Harbin Y-12 had undergone several changes and upgrades over its lifetime, including more powerful engines and the removal of leading edge slats in its second version. The latest version, the Y-12F, even featured new wings, landing gear, and a more powerful engine. Even with these advancements, the possibility of a mechanical failure could not be ruled out. As the investigators delved deeper, they faced the daunting task of piecing together the final moments of the ill-fated flight from the charred remains of the aircraft. The inquiry also looked into the safety protocols and guidelines followed by the Kenyan government officials. Prior to this incident, a recommendation had been made that no more than three cabinet ministers or senior government officials should travel on a single plane. The tragic accident highlighted the need for such guidelines to be followed more strictly. While the investigation provided some answers, it also led to more questions. The quest for truth continues as investigators tirelessly work to prevent such tragedies in the future. The answers they uncover will not only bring closure to the bereaved families, but also ensure safer skies for all. The crash of the Harbin Y-12 had far-reaching consequences, not just for the families of the victims, but for the nation of Kenya. This tragic event sent shockwaves through the country, abruptly halting the peace mission that had brought the officials to Masabit County. The loss of six members of parliament, many of whom were also serving as ministers in the government, disrupted the political landscape and left a void that was deeply felt. The leaders who perished were instrumental in reconciling warring communities, and their untimely demise cast a shadow over the peace process they had initiated. President Mwai Kibaki's response to the tragedy was heartfelt. He declared three days of national mourning, acknowledging the magnitude of the loss and expressing his deep shock and sorrow. The nation grieved together, united in their shared loss. However, even amid the grief and sorrow, there were valuable lessons to be learned from the tragedy. The plane crash was not the first to involve leading Kenyan politicians. A previous inquiry into an accident in 2003 had recommended that no more than three cabinet ministers or senior government officials should travel on a single plane, a recommendation that was unfortunately not heeded in this instance. This tragic incident served as a wake-up call 
highlighting the inherent risks of ignoring such safety recommendations. It underscored the importance of prioritizing the safety of officials, particularly when they are tasked with critical missions like mediating peace between warring communities. The aftermath of the crash also prompted a reassessment of the aircraft being used for such missions. The Harbin Y-12, a Chinese-built twin-engine turboprop, was scrutinized, and considerations for its suitability for similar missions in the future were made. The tragic crash served as a stark reminder of the risks involved in peace missions and the importance of ensuring the safety of those who undertake them.